Mock drafts are rarely right, but sometimes they do give us a hint into what the NFL draft could look like. So today we're taking Lance Zerline's Mock Draft 3.0 as if it were true and laying out what your rookie drafts would look like in super flex leagues. My name is Cameron Lawrence and welcome to the Fantasy Football Fellows YouTube channel. We're going to jump right into it, but not before giving credit where credit is due to the guys over at BDGE for kind of coming up with this idea of a video. They did it for the Mel Kuyper and Daniel Jeremiah videos. We'll link their channel up above if you want to go check those ones out. But the first pick from Lance Zerline is the first pick that every single person has, and it's Caleb Williams of the Chicago Bears. I won't spend too much time on this one because, you know what? We all know, or have known for a month or so now, that Caleb Williams is for sure going to the Bears in a super flex league. He is the 101. He is that special of a talent. I have a team with Mahomes and Lamar. If I'm in the 101, I'm either trying to trade back to the 102 and get that extra plus, or I'm just taking Caleb because I do think he is that good of a prospect going onto a team with Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and they have the ninth pick, which they might be taking a wide receiver. Not saying they for sure do, but in Lance Zerline's world, they definitely might be. Caleb Williams is the no-brainer here. Don't get it twisted. He is that good. All right, and the second pick is Jaden Daniels to the Washington Commanders. Obviously won the Heisman last year. We know he has great rushing upside. Uh, we saw we saw that on display continuously last season, and I really think what this does, why he's the 103 for me in Superflex drafts, is because his floor is going to be that of Justin Fields, that you, as long as he's healthy, will get three years of top eight quarterback points per game production as his floor, right? That's if everything goes bad. That's if the team falls around, if he's a bust, you know, that that's what we're going to see. I don't think that's what you get from Jaden Daniels. I think you get a guy who could be on that Kyler Lamar track, maybe not quite as good, maybe as good, but, you know, on that track of putting up 20 plus fantasy points per game. He's got a pretty decent supporting cast around him. You know, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson, Cliff Kingsbury now calling the plays. So it should be interesting to see what they do, right? It's not the best landing spot for a quarterback, but it's not one where you're very, you know, nervous about where what he's going to do, how he's going to perform in this offense. Speaking of someone we might be a little bit more nervous about, Drake May to the New York Giants. Obviously, the Giants trade up from six to three with the New England Patriots to go get their guy. I would assume if this happens that Drake May is then sitting behind Daniel Jones for one season. I think that's a good thing for Drake May. If you watch our last podcast, Tyler and Lucas breaking down the rookie quarterbacks and running backs, right? They talk Tyler talks about Drake May should sit behind a sit behind someone for a year. He needs a year to kind of continue to develop, get the feet together, get the mechanics down clean up some of that you know sloppiness that we've seen from him because we know the upside the upside is tremendous you know after Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams he definitely has the highest upside of any of these quarterbacks so you're hoping you know what okay he can sit behind he comes in he's fantastic the problem is this team yeah at this point has no weapons obviously yeah they they'll make changes if Drake May is going to play but it's going to be young guys obviously you know you never know if they're going to pan out and this team just has had so much inconsistencies really since their last Super Bowl run. You you know, I know everything's changed. You know, GMs, coaches have changed. They had the playoff run with Daniel Jones, but then last year was brutal. So you're hoping, hey, you know what? Maybe Brian Dable can work his magic, dip back into his time with Josh Allen and really help Drake May if he's in this spot. However, for me, I do have Drake May slot in as the 106. So a couple slots down, two guys between him and Jaden Daniels. I just I just don't love this spot for Drake May. If a team's going to go up and trade for him, I would really hope that it's this next team, which is the Minnesota Vikings trading up with the Arizona Cardinals to go get J.J. McCarthy. I think Drake May has a higher ceiling than J.J. McCarthy, but if you put any of these quarterbacks in this Vikings team where you have a t coach like Kevin O'Connell who has shown, hey, I'm going to get guys open continuously all over the field. Even with Jefferson out, we're playing with Josh Dobbs at quarterback, right? We can still go out and win games. I think that's the kind of offense you want to be. Obviously, then you have Justin Jefferson. You have Jordan Addison. You have TJ Hawkinson. You got Aaron Jones on that team. If you're playing this year, 
JJ, you know, it'll be interesting to see if he sits a year, if he plays this year. I have him slotted if he's a Minnesota Viking at the 105. I think for him and Drake May, landing spot is going to be huge. I think Drake May has the higher ceiling, but I think if you put any quarterback in this offense, they get a they definitely get a bump. Kirk Cousins was a top eight quarterback in points per game last year, which means for me, McCarthy doesn't exactly have to be crazy athletic to go be a you know high score. We saw that with two of this last year, throwing 4,600 yards, 29 touchdowns, quarterback 19 in points per game. Right in this offense, you can be extremely productive. JJ McCarthy moves moves pretty well, so I, that's why I have him slot him in at the one oh five. Next, we have the Chargers staying. They're they're a team that a lot of people have talked about moving back, but in this mock, they are staying because Marvin Harrison Jr. is on the board. And can you really blame them? Because guys. Marvin Harrison Jr. attached to Justin Herbert as the unquestioned one in this offense was the only target means that he's the wide receiver one in this draft and he is the 102 in our first round mock. I do want to address this real quick. If you're looking at it, you're like, why is there only 11 spots? Well, there was only 11 offensive players taken in the first round. That is why, you know, there's only 11 spots. Didn't want to dip into the second round. So maybe some of these second round guys would slip in a little bit higher, but for the mean, for the purpose of this, we're just doing the first 11 guys taken in the first round. And this Marvin Harrison pick, let me tell you, it just gives me absolutely juiced. I mean, this guy is elite with an elite quarterback. I don't care if they run the ball 700 times. Marvin Harrison's the guy that Justin Herbert's going to throw the ball to. Marvin Harrison's a guy that I could see going 1,300 yards as a rookie if he is the wide receiver one for Justin Herbert. I think no matter the landing spot, I think he's the 102. And then especially with this, you know, I talked about earlier with that dynasty team. As I'm thinking more about it, maybe I do take Marv at the 101. If I got Mahomes and, you know, Lamar at the 102, I'm really hoping Marv slides to me because then I don't have to make that choice and I get an elite wide receiver to go with those quarterbacks. But Marvin Harrison, the unquestioned one in this draft. The New England Patriots take Malik Neighbors. Obviously, they trade back. They go get a guy. This is them saying, hey, Jacoby Brissett, most likely going to be our bridge quarterback for this season. We're going to build out the rest of the roster and go get our guy. I think Malik Neighbors in it, almost any other draft is the wide receiver one. Last year's draft, he's easily. The wide receiver won. The problem with this year is that he has Marvin Harrison Jr. in it um, with him. I know it's not an ideal landing spot. I don't think I think this means that this rookie season, probably not the same upside, right? We could have been talking if he goes to a place like Arizona, that all of a sudden, hey, maybe him or Harrison, who's gonna have, you know, push some of these rookie records, right? That's how good I think both of them are. But with Jacoby Brissett, we tamper that a little. However, I still think he's the 104 because I still think he's that good of a prospect. I still think he's that good of a wide receiver that you need to be taking him at the 104 just behind Jaden Daniels ahead of those other two quarterbacks. All righty, we then skip down to the ninth pick. Again, we're only talking fantasy relevant players. If you want to go check out his Lance Lines entire mock draft, check it out at NFL.com. Uh, he, he's got the whole thing there with his breakdown for every single first round pick, but Roma Dunze, he's the next, you know, fantasy relevant name off the board. He would be the wide receiver three in this situation, at least in year one behind DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, another huge boost for Caleb Williams, really helping cement him as that one one And I know what you might be thinking, man, is this going to be like the Seattle situation last year with JSN? We were told JSN is this great prospect. He barely even plays. I don't think that's the case. The difference is Seattle mainly ran two wide receiver sets. They rarely ran three wide receiver sets. I think this Bears team, you bring in Caleb Williams, you're going to look to spread out the field a little bit more, let him make some plays. You're going to run a lot more three wide receiver sets. Obviously, if you haven't heard about reception perception by Matt Harmon, Odunze is the first rookie, and I don't know how he may be forever. To have all greens on that, to have, you know, look phenomenal coming out, which is a big deal because he's tough off the line and he goes up and gets everything. 
he he was the reason one of the big reasons I think Penix looked as good as he did. Not not to take anything away from Penix, but having a guy like Odunze out on the perimeter is a is huge. I've heard a lot of people discuss maybe Rome should be ahead of neighbors in this draft. People saying that is a possibility. I, I think it's just so rare that you have three wide receivers of this caliber who could all easily be the wide receiver one in a draft class in their own year. But you have them together. Bears get lucky, get them at the 109. And you know, they pair him up with Caleb Williams. Adunze again is my is the 107 right behind that first clump of guys we talked about, the first six picks of the draft for Lance Zerline. And then we go to the 110, and we get a tight end, Mr. Brock Bowers, who was one of the most accomplished tight ends, you know, in NCAA history at Georgia. Put him up over 170 receptions, 2,300 yards. 34 touchdowns in three years. He, he is only six foot three, 240, so he's a little bit on the smaller side for a tight end. But obviously, going this high in the draft, teams are going to use him. Well, unless your name's Kyle Pitts, you play with Arthur Smith. But teams are going to look to use them. This Jets team is win now. However, rookie tight ends take a little bit to get going. You even look at Sam Laporta this last year, right? He only had 800 yards. It was the fact that he had 10 touchdowns. So if Obviously, if Bowers can get 10 touchdowns, that's huge, but still a rookie tight end. You're tampering your expectations for this year. I have him as my one at the 108 right behind Rome. I do think he's going to be that good later down the road. I just want you to know that if you're a win now team, Bowers might not be the pick here for you, right? If you're, hey, I'm contending, I got this pick. Maybe you punt on it. You go this next guy who's taken at the 16th pick and Brian Thomas, who was phenomenal last year right he was overshadowed by his own teammate Malik Neighbors who obviously was just tremendous but Brian Thomas was fantastic in his own right right 1100 yards 17 touchdowns an athletic freak put him in Arizona connected to Kyler Murray and man that would be nuts I got him as the 109 if you took him at the 108 I wouldn't be upset I don't think he's quite in that top tier right that Rome neighbors Harrison tier so I wouldn't take him ahead of those guys even with him being attached to Kyler but I think he's just as good as anyone in this next tier of players I think Kyler Murray's a fantastic quarterback I think he gets way too much hate so you put him in this offense to be the number one Right. He also has Trey McBride. Michael Wilson's there, but Michael Wilson's not going to challenge him to be the wide receiver one in this offense. I think this would be a phenomenal landing spot for Brian Thomas, who I think is a very talented wide receiver. And this would definitely be one that I would probably try to trade up. Like if he's sitting there at the 109, I would be trying to trade up to go get Brian Thomas, especially at this landing spot. We then just have two players left in this draft. And it's A.D. Mitchell going to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Lance put this out before the Diggs trade. So this makes this pick even more likely now after Stephon Diggs goes to Houston. A.D. Mitchell, obviously an explosive athlete. Obviously, you know, a guy who's going to be able to make these big plays. Now you put him on a team where they have no downfield threat. They have Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid who are great tight ends. But, you know, we're not looking at... 13, 14, 15 yards per reception. We got Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir who are not these down the field guys, right? These are closer to the line of scrimmage wide receivers who can get open. A.D. Mitchell will be the big play guy. And obviously, if you're attached to Josh Allen, that is humongous, right? I mean, Josh Allen to me is the second best quarterback in the NFL right now. You can say what you want. You can argue anyone you want. I have Josh Allen as two. I have Mahomes, a pretty clear gap, then Josh Allen. But when you attach him to a guy like A.D. Mitchell, fun things are going to happen. But I wouldn't get like overly excited. I do think there's a difference between him, Brian Thomas, and him. I'm not all of a sudden going to go crazy and take A.D. Mitchell over Brian Thomas. I'm still going to take Brian Thomas first. I'm going to take A.D. Mitchell at the 110, though. I'm going to be very content knowing the upside that this kid is going to have in this offense, even if they go with another wide receiver. Like, let's say they go out and they trade for a – T Higgins somehow with keeping the first. I know, obviously, if they're trading for T Higgins, they'd probably have to get rid of this first. But let's say they keep it. I still think there's definitely a role for A.D. Mitchell on this team. I don't think anything would affect him. But like I said, I think he's pretty firmly the 110 for me. 
And the final pick of the first round goes to the Kansas City Chiefs, and they take Lad McConkey. Not necessarily the name I thought I was going to see on this board um, when I first was looking through it, but I don't hate it at the same time, right? Lad's a great route runner. Um, sophomore coming out of Georgia, right? He's a guy that's used to the big time, which I feel like you need to be on the Chiefs. For me, it you know, it seems that he would have to play a little further down the field. Rice was definitely, you know, a little closer to the line of scrimmage kind of guy. Kelsey's not necessarily the down the field threat that he had been in the past. He never necessarily was, you know, in general. I'm not saying, you know, he was a burner like Tyree Kill. But Latin McConkey, I think Andy Reid is going to find you a spot, right? If you're a capable wide receiver, Andy Reid's going to be able to play you um, in this offense. And I, so obviously you got to love it. But I do have him at the 111. I think he's the last guy on this list. Um, I think he is the highest wide receiver. Then, I mean, if he's a Kansas City Chief, right? I don't see like either of the Xavier's popping ahead of him. It would be interesting to see where the running backs go, where Bo Nix, Michael Penix fall as far as him being the 111. But for the purpose of this, he is our 111 and he is the last pick. Well, guys, I thank you for listening. Thank you for joining in. Again, a shout-out to Lance Zerline. You can find his mock over on NFL.com. Shout-out to BDGE for the video idea. It was a fun you know, thing to go through of what does the fantasy landscape look like. Obviously, these mock drafts, you know what, they're never 100%, but it, you know, like I said, it's still fun to do. Next week, we got more content coming for you. We got our podcast breaking down the rookie wide receivers and tight ends in more depth. Um, we have five players to trade away in Dynasty if you're rebuilding. Some great content coming, so make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications.